Every GTA 6 fan now knows the Florida Joker. Some may call him a rapper, some may call him a tattoo model, but as of late of last year, people in the GTA community now know him as one thing, the dude from the GTA 6 trailer. GTA, we got the tough. You think I'm playing? But who really is the Florida Joker? Why is he suing Rockstar and does he actually have a case? That's not her. She had no case. I got a case. They took my likeness. They took my life. They took my story and made it to a video game. Well, judging from the past Rockstar lawsuits, we may already know this answer. So today, we take a dive into the Florida Joker and see how he went from a regular dude to now trying to both sue and work with Rockstar at the same time. I'll break that kid out of the site. We're now giving him a lights up and we're going to hack your system again. Keep playing. Known online as Joker305, or by his real name, Lawrence Sullivan, he was just a regular dude who grew up in New York and then Peru before eventually landing in Gulfport, Florida, where he lives to this day. He had a pretty normal life growing up until middle school when he would drop out to pursue a career in MMA. Eventually, he would begin getting more and more tattoos, including his first face tattoo after the death of his best friend. It all started with a teardrop in the cross. I got my face. My best friend, Adrian Silvera Lopez, got murdered up in Orlando in 2014, and the case is still unsolved, and I was like my best friend slash brother, and that's how it started then. Over the years, these tattoos would evolve into his eventual persona of becoming a real-life Joker, heavily inspired by Heath Ledger's character. These tattoos would become controversial not only to other people, but to his family as well. As coming from a religious household, his dad would go as far as to disown Lawrence after his rebirthing of getting all these tattoos. My dad, he's like Irish person, so like he has like old school morals and stuff like that. So me and him don't get along like that. And since I got my face tats, he's like disowned me. This would all lead up to 2017 when a mugshot of Sullivan went viral after being arrested for carrying a concealed firearm without a permit. From this point on, he would now become sort of a celebrity in the Florida area, simply known as the Florida Joker. After his mugshot went viral, he would partake in anything that got him paid. Interviews, tattoo modeling, boxing matches, and so on. He would build up a small fan base from his appearance and antics over the years, but it was finally on December 4th, 2023, when the Florida Joker would get what most would consider a big break, but to Sullivan, it was theft of his likeness. On this day, Rockstar Games released the long-anticipated GTA 6 trailer after almost five years since their last title launch. The trailer was absolutely massive, garnering a record-breaking 93 million views in 24 hours. While 99.9% .9 of people were praising Rockstar for the trailer, there was one Florida Joker who, after seeing it, wasn't too impressed. Florida Joker ain't having that. Y'all took my likeness. Y'all took my life. Look. The trailer featured multiple depictions of real-life Florida man moments like the hammer lady In the video you hear her spewing racial rant The dude climbing out of his car and even the Florida Joker's court hearing Immediately people began comparing the events from the trailer to the real-life events and undoubtedly Sullivan's name was mentioned a lot in the conversations as their comparison was almost one-to-one -one, even down to the sheriff sign in the background Unfortunately, however, Sullivan wasn't as enthusiastic about Rockstar using his likeness to promote their game and demanded Rockstar pay him millions of dollars for doing so. For a whole month, for a whole month, I've been giving you a free publicity. I want $10 million. $10 million for my suffering pain, definition of a character, stop playing with me. This would spark a months-long hate campaign from the Florida Joker to Rockstar over the next few months, demanding money and even threatening to sue Rockstar, saying the only reason the game is so popular is because of him. Florida Joker, man, Joker, I'm making that game more relevant. People want to play it. I'm the reason why that game is so hyped right now. Obviously, these comments didn't get him much but publicity as Rockstar would never formally respond to the threat. 
He would eventually switch his story up and instead offer Rockstar partnership to promote GTA 6 by allowing him to voice the character and partake in meet and greets and Comic Con for advertisement of the game, but he was still asking for money. Show me like 50,000, 100,000. Let me voice the character. Let me go to the meet and greets. Let me go when the game's released, sign, take pictures with fans. And while I don't think Rockstar even intends to respond to this guy, it raises an interesting discussion of whether he is entitled to anything or not. While threatening to sue a company, then a week later trying to partner with them may hurt your chances, it does beg the question on if the Florida Joker is entitled to some compensation from Rockstar. And while I'm no lawyer, the general consensus is no. You see, back in 2014, after the release of GTA 5, there were two such instances of people trying to sue Rockstar for the same thing as the Florida Joker. Lindsay Lohan attempted to sue Rockstar for using her likeness after she believed that Lacey Jones, a side character and GTA 5's red bikini girl loading screen, was a depiction of her. She even went as far as to say that Rockstar copied her signature peace sign pose which is one of the most outrageous things I've ever heard. I don't know how you can take credit for the peace sign, but okay. And on another instance, TV star Karen Gravano tried to also sue Rockstar for believing that the character Antonia Bonato was inspired by her. However, as you can probably guess, both of these cases were dismissed. And that's because Rockstar isn't dumb. At the end of the day, Rockstar and Take-Two are aware enough to know what they can and can't get away with, especially when it comes to real life people and companies within their games. Rockstar has a horde of lawyers and you can guarantee that before making something like the GTA 6 trailer, they asked their lawyers exactly what could be held legally liable and what wouldn't, making sure that nothing could be used against them later. The voice actor for Arthur Morgan says it best. GTA, we gotta talk. No, you don't. You don't need to talk to them. They're not going to talk to you. They've had people like you trying to sue them for decades. They are lawyered up, man. They know exactly what they can and cannot get away with. If I were you, I would use the notoriety that they just threw your way to my advantage. Capitalize it on it somehow. While I personally think the Joker has the best case out of all three, that means almost nothing since it still isn't enough evidence to win against Rockstar. Especially when people point out that DC should then sue him for profiting off of their character, the Joker. So no, it doesn't seem like the Joker will be getting any type of compensation from Rockstar, but honestly, with being featured in the trailer, that should be good enough. The Joker could have taken this opportunity to make content and to play into the GTA 6 Joker role, which I'd argue could have made him very popular among fans. However, when your first approach is to sue the company that made you famous, publicly ask them for money, and then retract it all in hopes of working with them, he has probably already destroyed any career he could have made from it. The odds of him voicing a role or working with Rockstar are now slim to none. And I can only hope if he ever gets this chance again, he doesn't make the same mistake.